All right, so I started tearing down my wheel horse uh, rear transmission axle combination, and I found a couple of couple of problems that I got to address before I can put it back together. Um, so, uh, for starters, I, I got this you know through online auction for dirt cheap, um, and it came shipped to my door empty of fluid, obviously. Um, unclean right so it wasn't really uh it wasn't really pristine but it um you know the price was right and it, at face value everything seemed to work really good uh with the exception of um there's a high low selector lever that was seized up so this is an eight speed transmission it's really a four it's it's really um uh, six speeds forward and then two in reverse. Uh, it's a it's a four speed gearbox with a high low selector. Uh, the high low selection is really all done at the input, where um, you have a lever that you move side to side, and the leader it'll either mesh to a big gear, or if you crank it over the other direction, it meshes to a smaller gear. Um, so that. On the input shaft, it basically just gets you. I believe it's about 50% uh, reduction based on where you have it, uh, what position you have it in. Um, there was uh, some signs here that th there might have been some metal floating around in this box because some of the gear teeth, when I took this apart, were in not a great state. Um, so this is a what they call a cluster gear. It's one of it's, it's the uh, that would be the third shaft in the train, and on on the uh, the teeth on this middle gear, they're pretty worn out. They've got some they got some pretty bad gouges in them, and then on the on this gear down here at the bottom, these look like they've been chewed up pretty good as well, but they still mesh and they work. So for my application, what I'm trying to do with this, uh, this, should, this shouldn't be a big deal uh, as long as they mesh okay. Uh, this, you know, obviously came out of a garden tractor that probably had something, you know, probably between 15, 20 horsepower. Um, this is gonna be driven by uh, a one and a half horsepower hit and miss engine. So as far as rough service, this thing's not gonna see any kind of major uh, major loads or major inputs so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that as is you can get replacements for those but they are very expensive your best bet is to probably find somebody else that has another one of these tear it down and see if you know see if they have uh, good gears in them because i think to get replacement parts for these through toro they're like this gear alone just this just this uh this uh, three gear cluster is like, I don't know, 750 bucks, which is ridiculous. So, um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let that go. Um, the, um, the two problems I think that were the source of the metal that I was able to root cause here was, first there's a needle bearing. They, all these shafts are mounted with needle bearings uh, with the exception of the rear axle that's got needle bearings on the outside and it's got uh, large ball bearings on the inside. But all the shift components, uh, or all the all the gear shafts, they use needle bearings. And on, on this side, there's two shafts for speed selection. There's a smaller shaft here for the high-low range. That's just for the shift rail for the high-low range. And then in the middle, those get connected back to the rear axle through this intermediate gear cluster, which sits in here. Okay, so that, that ties into your shift selection, and then this meshes into your the bull gear on your rear axle. And the back side of this sits into a closed needle bearing, like many of these others. And the one that, that was in here is completely sheared off. So all the needle bearings were actually intact. It was still in there and still you know, still completely encased. But these are like 
tiny little rolling pins. So they have, on the ends, they have just these little pins, and a lot of the pins were sheared off. So this this normal, I say, exemplar has like curled over steel to kind of trap all those little needles in there on those those very tiny pins. This one was sheared right off. So that metal got fractured out and ended up in the case somewhere, as well as some of the little needles on the ends of those rollers. So that was no good, and I, I think that's probably the source um, for the all the foreign material in here that worked its way up into these gears and, and chewed up some of these gears. So I've got new I got new ones of those coming, so I can replace those. And the other thing was the sticky high low selector was root cause down to a bad fork. So this fork is bent. I guess this is a pretty common failure on on these types of transmissions. Um, when I when you look at it up close, you can see that it's worn out pretty bad. This shouldn't. It's got a step in it. This shouldn't be like that. This should just be a a plate. This is a good good example, but it should be like more like that. This one's got a nasty step cut into it. And then also you can see it's it's worn down to a taper. And when you look at it on end, it's bent. All right, so it's got a pretty nasty bend to it. And this is probably a symptom of somebody trying to force it into gear when they should have gingerly slowed the machine down and tried to coax it into gear. This is all unsynchronized. And this is a relatively small gear that this um, that this engages. So what it does is basically, it's on it's on a rail, the rail screws into the case. Inside of this guy, there's this little tube, there's a spring and a ball detent. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a trick to get this installed, but once it's in there, it's got two grooves for two detents for two positions. So this sits in there and then poking through the top of the case is this lever, and this is what controls, this is, goes to the hand control. And all this does is traverses it between, when you spin it, it's kind of tricky. When you spin it, it traverses it through those two positions, right? So it's not a whole lot of movement. This is actually a, not a very high quality part, when I look at it, and it, it's possible that it was um, repaired in the past because it's got some pretty, pretty sloppy looking MIG welds on it. A lot of chicken poop. Um, uh, but they do make a replacement for this. Um, costs about 50, 60 bucks. So I got a new one coming, uh, as opposed to trying to trying to make it make a new one, which I, I think could totally be done. But, you know, it's not worth 50 bucks of my time. So I'll get a new one of those. Um, the way this works is on the input shaft. You've got your big gear stacks. Your shift rail for your speed selection, your shift rails, these two gears out here. That's really your, um, your neutral positions and your, and your, um, your speed selection. The high-low selection all starts at the beginning. Let me take these off so I don't drop them. The high-low selection starts at the beginning here. All right, so this this is input from the engine. And on this, on this gear right here, this is what allows you to select high or low. So when, when this is traversed into this position, it'll actually slip over the input shaft like that and that meshes into the small gear and that's what allows you to get gear reduction and then when it's moved out this rides on the big gear and that gets you your faster speed so the the, the low the low gear was the one that it wouldn't go into low gear and it's 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 kind of obvious well maybe not so obvious but it's 
perceivable that this could be problematic at speed because if you try to force it, you can see if the teeth aren't perfectly aligned, if you try to force it, that force has to go somewhere and it's gonna go into this, what I would call fuse, right? So this, this mechanism like this, right? So if you try to force it and it ain't gonna go, it's just gonna it's just gonna bend that very thin piece of sheet metal. All right, so if you're if you're very at a very slow speed, this actually slips on pretty easy. So these aren't dogged either. So there's really it's not you know there's no synchros in it. there's no synchronizers in any of this stuff. There's no dogs or anything. So it's just straight cut gears. So I can see I can see how. This might have been maybe a design flaw or maybe they engineered this to be a fuse I'm not sure but either way this has got to go so this is kind of in a holding pattern for now until I get uh, some parts in the mail and when that happens, I'll be able to progress on to my next step, which is, uh, you know, press these bearings in, get this all back assembled, put a new gasket on, seal it up, and fill it with fluid. And then this whole unit, I can mock up. I can start mocking up a frame because it's all going to be based around um, the engine platform, which is a, it's an old John Deere Model E horse and a half hit and miss engine and then this guy this will be the, the rear axle for it so it'll be kind of neat the idea is right now my hit and miss engine is it's a nice conversation piece it's kind of like you know when uh, when we have company over the kids like to see it in action it's, it's kind of one of those neat one of those neat things to to show off but it, it's not doing anything. It's just an engine that just sits there and runs. So um, the idea is that I can I can plant this onto a chassis, a rolling chassis, make up you know maybe fabricate up some steel wheels, and have it drive. So it'd be like a little miniature tractor. Uh, so once I get this all put back together, then I can start doing the mock-up work and uh, and set up a frame. Until then, I'll. Um, I'll uh, plan on doing another video once I get all these parts back together and I can show you how these get assembled because they're pretty it's pretty straightforward.